Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Magic in the Basement. Today we're continuing our series on the Commander 18 um, precons. Uh, today we'll be doing the red blue one. Um, so what I'm doing and these ones is I'm opening, doing the opening to show what's inside of them as well as showing you some quick cheap upgrades on how you can make it better out of the box in my opinion of course these are all in my opinion what I think um, the thing with these kind of upgrades I would say is there's tons of brewers out there there's tons of different ideas and tons of different ways you could do it you could do a budget you could do it expensive or whatever these are just some ideas on how I would do it quick and cheap um, now that being said I'm not messing with the mana bases because they're playable out of the box with the mana they come with uh, and mana bases can kind of get crazy you know with the price and things of that nature so if you do have shock lands and fetch lands and dual lands feel more than happy to upgrade it to your deck but if you don't, don't, don't flip out about it because it'll work without them. Um, I'm going to try to keep the upgrades I talk about cheap. I know this uh, deck has blue in it. So you could get pretty crazy with what you put inside. I'm going to try to uh, keep that to a, a factor of trying to keep the things I suggest the budget. Um, I will make some uh, honorable mentions about uh, the upgrades for the land. There is one land that's pretty cheap that I, I would put in if you want to mess with land. Inventor's Fair, since this is very artifact friendly, uh, that would help out, in my opinion, if you want to mess with land. Alright, so, anyway, let's pop it open. As you see, I got my sleeve, my three sleeves, and my, my perfect fits ready for the foils. Because you know, once they hit the air, they turn into Pringles. And the best way to keep a foil um, in good condition is to keep it from being exposed to the air as much as you can. So what I do is, as soon as I open up the box. I double sleeve the, the three foils to keep them from the elements. Um, as you see, it's standard box, oversized box, no art. I think that's kind of lame, but you know, that's wizards. Inside, you have the, the how to getting started, tells you about it. Um, the huge box, again, you know, I think they could have saved on the space and then obviously the deck so let's check out the deck before we open it see if it's you know curling any because I have had some products that showed um, curling inside of the pack all right so here we go here's the deck I'm gonna pop this open and quickly double sleeve the three foils and then we'll get into looking at what's inside um, so, they usually have like a little tab on the back, yeah, here we go, get that tab, pull it around, alright, and to the emergency anti-airification double sleeving. I get them into the perfect fit first, and then into the the uh, actual sleeve because the perfect fit first um, helps the process as you put the others in the sleeves All right. and with these upgrades I'm going to um, these decks come with multiple commanders but uh, for this series I'm going to be doing the upgrades for the deck of the, the Planeswalker as the commander. Alright, so let's have let's take a look through and see what we get. Sahili. Alright, now with the sleeve on it, I'll read it because it is probably blurry. Four mana, 
two colorless, a red and a blue for foil loyalty planeswalker that can be your commander. Plus one. Put a 1-1 one -one colorless servo artifact creature token into play. Um, plus one. The next time a spell you cast this turn, uh, I'm sorry, the next spell you cast this turn costs one less to cast for each artifact you control as you cast it. Which is good. And, but you got to be careful because the wording is just as you cast it. So if you plus one it, right, and then um, main phase, um, say you don't use it in that main phase, you want to wait till main phase two, um, and then some uh, artifacts die in combat or whatever, you're going to get less out of it. Or if they bounce artifacts in response, you're going to get less mana out of it. Keep that in mind. Minus seven for each artifact you control, create a token that's a copy of it. Those tokens gain haste. Exile those tokens at the beginning of your next instep. All right, so that's the Healy. Then we got this guy. I don't know if um. Let's see if I can try to get these more in focus. One second. Alrighty, um, let's talk, go to the next one. Um, he's the engineer. Uh, creature tokens are, you control have haste. Oh, he's six mana, four colorless, a red and a blue for four four. Creature tokens you control have haste. At the beginning of your uh, combat turn, create a two one blue mirror artifact token. Then you may choose a token you control. If you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. Pretty fun stuff. You could do some shenanigans with that. Alright, then we got this one. Uh, Tanos the Urza's Apprentice. You know, I would love if they brought like an Urza Planeswalker back. You know, I would love to have Urza. He was my favorite. Anyway, uh, he's ha he's a two mana, a red and a blue for one three, haste. Um, a red do a tap, pay a red and a blue and tap it. Copy target artifact activated or triggered ability you control from the artifact source. You can, can pick new targets. So he copies ab abilities and acti uh, activated abilities and um, triggered abilities off artifacts. Pretty cool. Didn't get some mirrors. Uh, let's look at the tokens. They've been pretty cool in the last couple of decks. So let's look at them again. These ones, let's see, you get a bunch of mirrors. Well, actually, no, you only get three mirrors. Uh, you get four, th three Thropters, a Clue, some Survivors, and on the flip side of them, you get Construct. Oh, more mirrors on the back. Uh, a couple of Thropters, Servo, and some more Constructs of different types. Um, again, I like these because they are double-sided and they are the better quality uh, cardboard. They're not on token paper. Alright, then we got a Loyal Drake. Um... I'm going to take this one out because this deck deals a lot with uh, the commander, I mean the artifacts. So this, the Royal Drake you do, did, did, does get you some card draw, but it's not an artifact, so I'm going to take that one out. Now this other one is a not an artifact, but I leave this one in because he's a, the Loyal Apprentice. He's got haste. But if you control your commander at um, uh, beginning combat, you get a 1-1 one -one Thropter with flying. And it has haste. So that one I leave in only because of that ability with the Thropter. He makes Thropters and, um, you know, since it's an artifact deck, that, that kind of matters. So I, like, I, I leave that one in for that reason. Alright. Alrighty, we got another one of the golems that if it hits, you get your um, you get to play your commander for free. 
Um, we've got uh, the Artif Artificer uh, that you get um, makes your artifacts cost one less to cast. So obviously a lot of um, artifacts matters in this deck, obviously. Uh, into the Royal, Kick, Bounce Spell. Um, got a lot of improvised, well not a lot, but a good number of improvised cards. Now improvised lets you, uh, takes a high costing card like this one, 5 mana, and lets you tap artifacts that aren't tapped to pay for the colorless. So you can get pretty much 3 cards for tapping 3 mana. I mean, two mana and tapping three artifacts, which is not bad when you got like a lot of um, servos and stuff like that out. All right, some more card draw. Some more card draw. Artisfer. This one gets you two artifacts, two thropters, but he costs a bit more. Engineers, more th again, more thropters. Um, another one. This one's got improvise on it, and it makes uh, thropters. I think this one was in uh, what was that? Uh, um, uh, Kaladesh? Not Kaladesh. Um, good gravy. Ether Revolt? I don't remember. I, it looks very familiar, uh, but this paper seems better quality, so if it is a reprint, I like it. I know this was in one of those sets, Kaladesh or Ether Revolt. He's uh, pretty much an artifact lord, gives all your artifacts plus one plus one. Command Sphere. Yeah, with this deck, you got a bunch of, like, mana rocks artifacts, so a lot of uh, acceleration in your mana art, uh, with artifacts. And these ones um, draw cards when you sack them. Signets. Right, this one is, gives you clues. Mindstone. Pilgrim's Eye. Some pretty, pretty basic ones. And yes, uh, the Ultra Pro box is in the shop, but no, I am not sponsored by them. I just happen to have that so it doesn't move around. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh, exile card. Um, Yeah, I'm going to take this one out. It is an artifact, but I'm going to take that one out. Soul Ring, it's in, like, everything. Swiftfoot, I'm going to take Swiftfoot out. Yeah, it's an artifact. Yeah, it's good, but uh, with the Planeswalker as your commander, you're not going to... I feel like this is a main, uh, more of a planeswalker -y type card. Granted, you can put on anything you want, any creature you want, but my my feelings, I, I usually put that on planeswalkers. Not, I'm sorry. Commanders to get them attacking, but I'm gonna take this one out. All right, this one uh, destroy target, sacrifice, destroy a permanent. Um, I'll take that one out too. This one uh, enters battlefield target, uh, put target card from graveyard to bottom of the library, and then you can get any mana out of it. Another mana rock. Island, just a random island. I guess maybe okay. That was uh, separating uncommons from rares. Okay, I see that. <laughs> I was like, really? Top. This is one of the ones that um um as as copies each time you played your commander. Then it copy uh, creates a token of uh, target artifact, which is pretty good. Especially when you got a bunch of artifacts. Um, Battlecraft guy. Uh, if he attacks and you control three more artifacts, creature opponents control those all abilities and become base power, toughness, uh, one on one, one one. So in this deck, 
Um, yeah, Metalcraft is very easy to get off. Um, there we go. This one I don't care for too much. It's at the beginning of uh, your end step. Target enchantment deals uh, damage to equal to its converted mana cost to its controller unless that player sacrifices. I don't really care for this. Granted, it's like hate on enchantments. I get that. There's not a lot of you can do with that. It's just not my... I don't know. I don't feel it's that, 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 that good in this particular deck, so I'm taking that one out. Um, here's the, uh, the namesake card for this deck. Like I said, the other ones have them. This was the red, uh, red one. It's, uh, X and 3. And it's got improvised, so it's got the, you can tap your, um, artifacts mechanic. Um, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of artifacts with converted X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all revealed cards this way that weren't on the into your uh, put on the battlefield near graveyard. Amazing card in this deck, considering that you can use Sahili's ability and put um you know X you, for the X ability. You know her plus one that says it's minus uh one colorless mana. That would work for the X ability. And then think about it. This. You place a Healy on like turn three and you're making servo servos, you know, whatever. So you're getting servos. This X can get ridiculous because when you do get it, say you got what? I don't know. Um, four servos and some other stuff, you know, maybe a couple of mana rocks. So you got like, say, six artifacts out, you know, which is very easily to do in this deck. Um,. With the mana rocks and the servos, you could be uh, tapping those servos for the improvised cost, and then you can plus one to Healy for the negative to your colorless mana cost. So, this thing can get ridiculous very quickly. So, that definitely stays in. Um, this is a new card, I like it. A lot of people are iffy on if they like it or not. Treasure Nabber, I think it's very unique. Um, it is three mana for a goblin, or a goblin rogue, for three two. Whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana, gain control of that artifact until the end of your next turn. So, like, if they're, you know, um, tapping their soul ring, or their other mana rocks or signets or whatever, you get that mana rock for until the end of your your next turn. So on their turn, they're tapping their soul ring for two. You get that, and then on your turn, you get to use their soul ring on yours if you got it. Yeah, so you know it's pretty good. Granted, they get it back, but I like it because it makes them think twice on if they want to use that mana rock or not. Um, now, here's something kind of cool I, I, I thought about. If you put a sack mechanic into this, like an artifact sack mechanic, which, um, in one of the upgrades I do have, and they tap their mana of mana rocks, like their soul rings or their signets or whatever, or their gilded lotus even, you could not only take them for your turn, use them for their mana, but sacrifice them before they go back to their player. So you can be pretty dirty with this card. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, this is one of the new, new legends. Um, how do you pronounce your name? Varclad? I'm not good with names, man. But you can see the picture. She's pretty cool. Uh, she's the Betrayer of Cal Calidor. Um, she's a 3 3 for. Oops, I'm covering the mana cost for three. Three, three for three. All right, but when you swing at your opponent and uh, when she deals combat damage to your opponent, they get that many 1-1 one, one survivor tokens. Those survivor tokens can't block you and they can't attack your planeswalker you control. Um, when um, Varclad leaves the battlefield, you can tr gain control of all survivors. So... She, like, swings out, you know, 
makes her like. Granted, if she's not like buffed up currently based, she makes three survivors that can't hurt you and they can't block you. So every time she swings, you're getting three survivors that can't hurt or block you. And then if she ever dies, you get a bunch of survivors back. Pretty fun card, I imagine. Uh, I've never played it yet, but I'm not using it in the stack. I'm taking that one out. I do like the card, though. Don't get me wrong. All right, here we got a big tin mana boy with Flash. Uh, he's got he's a 12-12 for 10 mana Flash. He, this spell costs one less for each creature attacking creature. He's got Trample. And then when he leaves the battlefield, create a 6-12 construct artifact token with Trample. This guy's huge. So uh, you could play him on your turn or their turn because he's got the Flash. So say they're attacking with like, you know, they're a bunch of, you know, one ones or whatever, five creatures or whatnot. You could you could pay play this for five mana and then block something of theirs, you know, out of the blue. So if you're getting a, a twelve twelve flash trample for five mana, you're doing pretty good. And then when he dies, you get a six twelve token. Now the token's important for that other commander guy that can turn all your tokens into copies of chosen token him imagine if you had this guy out you turn all your throttlers into 612 tramples gg just something to think about also if you plus one sahili uh her minus ability uh, not her minus uh ability because she doesn't have a minus but the one that uh her second plus one that gives you um negative mana off of a spell you could carry that into your attack phase. So you could potentially say, all right, I'm a plus one to Healy, move to your attack phase, attack with your creatures, and potentially get this guy out for free. Because say you got like five servos or whatever, and you plus one her, so you're getting five mana off for those servos, and then you swing with those servos, that's minus 10. That means he would come in for free. Like him a lot. Alright, here we got one. Um, six mana. It's uh, when it comes into play. Battlefield, draw three cards. Tap that, three of uh, three mana of any color. When one or more creatures an opponent uh, controls attacks you, and arm block that player gains control, uh, uh, that player, I'm sorry, that player draws three cards, and gains control of the jewel. Very iffy card. Because, uh, yeah, you get three cards off of it. Yeah, it taps for three mana of any color. But then, if somebody... It's just going to make people want to start attacking you to get the sucker every turn. So unless you got a good defense out, it's more of a liability in my opinion. So this is one I take out. Alright, moving on. And, of course, if any of these cards are ones that you disagree with taking out, you know, hey, don't take it out. Use them yourself. Put it in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you see a possibility with that card or cards that I don't. I feel more, I'm more than happy to look at other perspectives. All right, here we go with a draw card, a tap two draw card, activate this ability. When you control three or more islands with the same name. I'm sorry, lands with the same name. Okay, so it's two mana. Tap two, draw cards. Yeah, pretty much if you got like three islands or three mountains. Yeah. Pretty, it's, eh. So-so. It doesn't hurt. But it's not the best. Alright. I like this card. I was reading this card before. It's one mana. It's got four abilities. You can tap three to untap it. Tap two and tap it to create a servo artifact. Uh, a token, obviously. Tap one and tap it. Sacrifice a servo to make a thopter. Or tap it with no mana and sacrifice a thopter to make a 4-4 construct. So it's got a lot of utility and it comes out for one mana. And it's got ability to untap. So if you ever got a lot of mana... You could see, this is definitely a mana sink that you could just run away with stuff. Um, 
especially if you got the guy, the uh, the other guy out that make, gives all your tokens haste. This uh, and you can go if you got infinite mana, you can just win the game. Just if they have uh, no defense on the ground, you just make you know infinite four fours on the ground. If they got no defense in the air, you make infinite one ones in the air. Just swing in for game. Like this card a lot. Uh, here we got um, duplicate. It's a six six trample. Permanent you uh, permanent you control gains indestructible until end of turn for five mana. Or exile. I'm sorry, I had to scratch my nose. Exile soul of new. I'm sorry, this isn't duplicate. This is new soul of new Phyrexia. Sorry. Oh my goodness, I'm screwing up. Horrible tonight. All right, so new Phyrex, soul of new Phyrexia, six mana. For six six trample, permanence you control gain indestructible until on the turn. I like that it helps you for board rights. Um, or te or five exile soul new Phyrexia from your graveyard. Permanence you control gain indestructible until on the turn. So if he's on the board, you can get indestructible. If he's in the graveyard, you can get indestructible. I like this card. All right, next. Um, five mana. And sorcery returns six nine land permits to their owner's hand for five. Uh, yeah, I like it. Simple to the point. Could come clutch. Granite's not as good as Cyclonic Rift, which if you got it, put it in here. I'm not going to name that in the upgrades because um, you know it's a little more on the pricier side. But if you got it, definitely put it in. It'll make this deck better. The five in, seven eleven for nine mana. Trample Island Walk Shroud. It's a big beater, but I don't like it. I'm taking it out. All right, Sahili's Artistry. Like this card in this deck. Uh, six mana. You could choose one or both. So one or both. Create a token of tar uh, that's a copy of target artifact. So that's great for, you know, Sailor's Ultimate. That's great for that guy that gives all your tokens haste and you can make stuff. Um, it's great for anything that has considered battle triggers. But the second one is create a, create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's artifact in addition. So pretty much, if there's a cool creature out there, you create a copy of it that's a, that token, and then you can create a, a, a token of that token. So you get you can get two out of it. Or if there's a good utility artifact, you can get 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 out get that too. Uh, still something I like a lot. All right, um, here we go. Six mana for Sphinx. Where? Whenever an artifact creature you control does combat damage to a player, you may create a, a one one blue thopter with fine. Pretty good, and it's artifact sphinx. There we go. Like I said, lots of artifact love. And it's all about the artifacts. Drop the spy network. Isn't this a reprint? I don't remember. Four mana enchantment at the beginning of upkeep if you control an artifact, create a one one thopter with flying. Whenever one or more artifacts you control, deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Love it. Blasphemous Act. Um, yeah, this has like, been reprinted a lot. It costs one less for each creature on the battlefield. Uh, deals 13 damage to each creature. So, in essence, if there's eight creatures on the battlefield, it costs one mana. And it deals 13 damage to each creature. Enough said. Chaos Warp goes into a lot of things. Uh, three mana. Um, it's Chaos Warp. It's it, it just it switches stuff out. Their biggest threat for something else. All right, we've got the uh, Hell Kite here. Seven mana. Dragon, Flying Haste, gets XO, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Um, pretty good. Good for the artifacts, uh, if you got a lot of them. 
and it's flying, so yeah, not bad. And it's only two mana to activate that once it's out. Uh, all right, uh, what's this called? Magma Quake X and two deals X damage to each creature without flying in each planeswalker. Instant, pretty basic. But, I mean, if you're going to run X spells, I would say, uh, what is that, um, uh, Banefire, the uh, reprint in 19, that's X in the red, uh, and, um, if X is over 5, it can't be countered, I like that one, I really do, and it's really cheap, here we go, um, Blink Moth Urn, beginning of each, pl each player's pre-combat main phase, but Blink Moth Urn's untapped, that player adds powerless for each artifact they control. Now remember, this helps your opponents too if they got a lot of artifacts. Granted, it'll be most likely helping you out a lot more. Good old Bosch. He reprinted again. Trample for 6-7. He's 8 mana. Sacrifice an artifact. Bosch deals its combat uh, deals damage equal to sacrifice artifacts for the mana target. The mana costs any target. Not bad. Not bad. He's eight mana. Uh, here we go. Dark Steel Juggernaut. Five. It's indestructible. It's power and toughness equal number of artifacts you control. And it has to attack each turn. Here's the duplicate. Sorry. I got him mixed up just, uh, before. He's six mana for a imprint. Uh, when a, a duplicate enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-creature token. As long as a, a card exiled with duplicate, as long as a card exiled with duplicate, it's a creature card. Duplicate has power and toughness equal to the power and toughness and creature types of the last creature card exiled with duplicate. It's a, still a shapeshifter. Now, I think it's a pretty good card. And it's an artifact. I get it, but I don't like it for this deck. I'm taking that one out. All right, we got Mimic Vat. Um, three mana imprint. Whenever a non-creature token dies, you may exile that card. If you do, um, return each other card exiled with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. Um, three, create and tap it, create a token that's a copy of a uh, card exile with mimic that. It gains haste, exile it at the beginning, and next in step. Alright. Mirror works, five mana artifact. Whenever no, uh, another knock token artifact enters the battlefield under your control, if you may pay two, if you do, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. Pretty good. Mere, good old Mere Battle Sphere. Alright. Seven mana for a big old Mere Ball of Death. Um, it's a 4 7. When it comes into play, it get, you create four um, 1 1 Mirrors. And when um, Mere Battle Sphere attacks, you may tap X, untap Mere you control. If you do, it gets X O until on the turn. And deals X damage to target player or planeswalker it's attacking. Now, cool thing to th remember with this is you can tap any mirror you control, not just the ones that were made with it. So if you had mirrors off of that other guy or whatever, or made uh, your servos and the mirrors with him and stuff like that, it would all work with this. Or if you doubled a uh, doubled uh, one ultimate on your Sahili and got doubles everything. Yeah, you could use all your mirrors on one battle sphere if you wanted. So, like, swing with both and the one that's not, you know, attack, blocked, or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, here we go. Uh, prototype portal and print. When prototype portal enters the battlefield, you may exile an artifact card from your hand. Uh, it's four mana. Attack X. And tap 8, create a token that's a copy of the Exiled Car, where X is its converted mana cost. Psychosis Crawler. 
Oh, God, I use this a lot in one of my combo deck. <laughs> it's just so good. Five mana for Star Star. It's power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. I love this card. That's a win condition in the right deck. Um, but this, I don't believe, is the right deck for it, so I'm taking it out. Uh, like I said, I do love this card. I just don't think this is that deck to play it in. Just my thoughts. Alright. Alright, we got Scuttling Doom Engine. Can't be black uh, creatures two or less. 6-6. Six, six. When it dies, deal 6 damage target uh, opponent or planeswalker. Steel Head Hellkite. Great card. 6 mana for 5-5. Five, five. Flying. Um... Pay two colors, he gets one zero to him to turn. Uh, pay X, destroy each non land permanent with converted mana cost X or less, whose controller was dealt combat damage by help, still help create this turn. Activate it only once per turn. Great card. Thropter Assembly. If you love Thropters, you'll love this assembly. Six mana for five five. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you. Uh, <clears throat> Beginning of upkeep, if you control no Thopters other than Thopter Assembly, return Thopter Assembly to its owner hand and create 5 1 1 Thopters. Good card. Um, unwinding Clock, 4 mana, untap all artifacts you control during each other's uh, unstapped phase. So it pretty much gives them Vigilance. Alright, we've hit the mana portion, so mana, mana, mana. Skipping all the mana, 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 mana. Basic lands. A lot of basic lands. And, um, yeah, these, like I said in the other decks, they're all, these are pretty much, you know, your basic package of non-basic lands. Except for this one. one uh, yeah, the Artifact Land works well for the deck. It's indestructible. This one creates um, servos. Another Artifact Land. I think they got the blue artifact land in here too. Yep, there it is. So, yep, there we go. Alright. So that's the deck. I like it. I like the blue red. I like the artifacts. Alright, alright. It's a good deck in my opinion. Um, so, we took out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, there was one other card in here I wanted to take out. Where was it? I may have passed it, not thinking. Um, oh yeah, Bosch. We don't really need Bosch. I mean, he's pretty cool and all that. I just don't think we need him. So, 10. Alright. So let's look at the 10 I was going to take out again. Bosch, Psychosis Crawler, Duplicant, the Leviathan, the Jewel, the, um, the Betrayer, uh, the, that one, Swiftfoot, the Claw, and the Drake. All right. Ten not really game breaking cards, you know. Now, like I said, we'll do some honorable mentions. If you got it, Karn Scorn Urza is great for an artifact deck. He's cheap. He gives you card draw, and his ultimate, with you can really call it all ultimate, it's minus two. But you can minus two him off the bat. Okay, what that does is you create a zero zero colorless construct. Uh, creature with token that's gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. You can do that twice before you have to plus him again. So he's kind of expensive. If you got him, I would suggest it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Also, Tezzeret is another honorable mention, the M19 one, or the other uh, all blue one I, I, I think came in the Tezzeret deck is good. But, like I said, those are kind of expensive. 
So if you have them, use them. If you don't, uh, don't worry about it. Um, yours, uh, another Tesseract. This one isn't really bad. This one, uh, expensive-wise, it comes in the Planeswalker deck. It's the foil one. The, I think it's like seven bucks, six bucks maybe. But he's pretty cool to think about. Um, he he, you draw a card for his plus one. His minus is is I'm sorry. His, his second ability is a zero. Uh, that makes uh, until your next turn, target artifact you control becomes a five five creature in addition to its other types but I like his minus seven which I find is unique it says put any number of cards from your hand onto the battlefield face down they're five five uh, artifact creatures very very unique ability on uh, his ultimate imagine also imagine that and going ultimate with your Sahili that would be a lot of five fives flying around just something to think about all right. So those are kind of the honorable mentions. Let's go into the actual upgrades. I like I said, these are all cheap cards, um, and they're all you know cards that I feel would make the deck great. They you might have other opinions if you do leave them in the comments. Uh, first off, we want to talk about Drevi, the Scrap Servant. He's a two, I mean, a four mana for a three loyalty Planeswalker. Um, he's all about artifacts. His plus two is discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. Um, his minus two is sack an artifact. If you do, return target artifact uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, that's right. If you sack a servo, you can get back a huge artifact. Uh, and then his minus 10 is, you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put in your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next sun step. Good card to upgrade. He's cheap. He's been reprinted. He's not bad. Um, here's one. War Storm, the War Storm Surge, six mana enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, remember that's enters, not cast. It deals uh, damage equal to its power to any target. So that work, that's good for when you're making Thopters. You can just ping stuff for one. That's good for when you go ultimate with Sahili. You can ping stuff for whatever she's making. You know, to get extra duty out of it, you know. It's pretty good. Gives you the options to ping off uh, creatures, planeswalkers, or, you know, just damage to the face. Um, I put it, like, this is like the Mere Battlesphere, but it's a little different. I am not uh, Pentavis. Seven mana for zero zero. It comes into battle with five one one counters on it. Uh, Removal uh, one one counter from it. Uh, it get, it create a, a Pentavis artifact creature token with flying. Uh, pay one, sacrifice a Pentavis, put a, uh, a Pentavite, I'm sorry, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Pentavis. So, you know, you can do stuff with that. That, uh, like, especially if you go, uh, that's on the field when you go ultimate with Sahili. Um, you could sack all the one, after you attack. You could sack all the ones that would the pentavites that would you know have to be uh, exiled and put them all onto this one and since it's gonna stick around. This one is pretty much the same thing almost. Uh, only it's got um, seven mana, same mana cost. Trick. Uh, oh god, I can't pronounce these things. But enters about field with three one one counters on it. Um, remove a one one counter. Create a 1 1 Trek of Estate artifact creature token with flying. It has sacrifice it. This uh, deals one damage to any target. I put these in there because they they come in with counters. They can do stuff with the counters. This one makes tokens. They're, and they're cheap 
to uh, acquire, uh, and their their bigger is costing spells, so you can use the heal as plus one better with it. Uh, here's one, Memnarch, love it for artifact with blue, seven mana for four or five. Uh, pay a uh, all colorless and a blue blue. Target permanent permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Tap three in a blue, gain control of target artifact. Does this uh, effect does not end at end of turn? Great card. You could just uh, steal their artifacts if they have them, or you could turn anything they have into an artifact and steal it. So good card. Here we go, Jorah, um, the one from Dominaria, 4 mana for 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a Historic, draw a card. Now remember, Historics are Artifacts, Legends, and uh, Sagas. So whenever you play and cast an Artifact, you're drawing cards. Mega card draw in this deck. There we go. This one mm, is a little bit iffy, but I like it because it's 1 mana for 1-2, you tap for and tap X untapped artifacts. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in any order. So you could do this at the end of their turn, you know, and then just tap all the artifacts that you didn't uh, attack with or whatever or use. And it digs for answers. It digs for whatever piece of what you need. And, I mean, it's pretty good. It's one mana to play it. Um, here we go, Scrap Trawler, 3 mana for a 3-2, when uh, Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact uh, in your graveyard with converted mana cost, less, um, with lesser converted mana cost. So if this dies, you get a 2 mana cost uh, artifact back. But if one of your big um, things die, like your, you know, mere battle sphere, you get something with six or less. So this is a great card to have. Here we go. Um, the how do you pronounce this? I'm just gonna Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. He is a artifact um, creature, three six for six mana. Uh, Cascade, return a pay three, return him to your hand. I like this because, A, it always gives you an artifact to play every turn if you need an artifact to trigger something, like Jorah, for example. And, B, it cascades, so you can cascade every turn. Pretty good stuff. You know, and um, it being six mana, yes, it is pretty up there. But remember, um, with uh, Sahili's, your commander's ability, you can get that reduced down to two. All right. And here's the tenth card, uh, three mana, Psy, one four. Whenever you cast an artifact, create a one one Thropter token, uh, uh, creature token with flying. Now this is the one I was saying that um, if you stole their mana rocks with the the goblin, uh, you can uh, sacrifice them into him. Pay a white uh, colors and a blue. Sacrifice two draw artifacts, draw a card, and. And this deck with so many artifacts, you're make creating so many Thropters. And if you need to use those Thropters to draw cards, there you go. You got an outlet and a mana sink. So, those are my upgrades uh, suggestions for this deck. I hope you enjoyed the opening and the upgrade suggestions. Um, I'll be doing my last deck tomorrow which is the land stack uh, uh, the, with, um, I forget his name. He's the, he's the cat with the stick, <laughs> pretty much. And it's the land matters deck. Um, they'll be coming out tomorrow unless I'm having trouble with upgrades. I will try to get it out as soon as I can, but uh, hopefully it will be tomorrow. Um, Please, in the comments, leave any comments on what you thought about my upgrades, what you thought about a few upgrades for your own personal um, brew of this deck, um, or what commander would you use to run this deck? Would you even play this deck? Just let me know how you feel in general. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed. And um, also, um, I did make that ninja deck, but I made a tribal with humans. If you guys would like to see that deck, please leave in the comments. Just say yes, you would like to see the ninjas. And I would happily make a video showing you that deck. I made it tribal because I want to do it into um, do a tribal uh, tournament, and I would like to use that commander. So anyway, um, you guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.